Welcome to the Naughty Child Podcast. I'm Richard, I'm the dad. And I'm Polly, and I'm the daughter. And today uh, we are uh, having our final episode about the 100 cricket. Six big ones for Shafali Verma. It's a brilliant wicket. One more to Sophie Eccleston. Beautifully struck by Andy Shrubsoff. Got all the way. Pulled away viciously by Nat Shiver. Goodness me, she timed that well. Very sharp. That went quickly to Joe Root. What a delivery from uh, Joffre Archer. What a man. He's taken four now. What a shot this was. Melly Crowdcow. Well, that was an authoritative shot from Lauren Winfield. Kate Cross with the catch. And Alex Hartley into the attack. Out! Brilliant start from Alex Hartley. So, Polly, this is a special edition mm-hmm. Coming out on a Sunday, only yeah. two days after our previous mm-hmm. episode came out. Yeah. Why is that? Well, the hundreds all over. And I felt we couldn't wait a whole week because it's like, you know, you've done a performance like post show blues. It's like I wouldn't want to drag it out for another week to like, you know, I wanna jump on the bandwagon of everyone still kind of having that excitement. Mm-hmm. But also kind of the sadness as um that it's ending. Um but also so it's kind of fresh in people's minds because um, although there are memorable things memorable things about an eliminator or a final, mm. you kind of forget them a week on and, you know, Rachel Hayhoe Flint and Charlotte Edwards Cup will be back in a few days. Mm. So I guess people's attention will be hopefully um, more focused on that. So um, got a special edition. Yes. Well, it's all been done in four weeks. Yeah. It's been absolutely amazing. It's been such a good month. I mean, if it's kind of felt, it feels longer than a month, but then it it feels like it's gone so quickly. It's I guess it's like you know when you go on holiday, it feels ages ago since you left, but it's gone so quickly. Well, I I think it's been a huge success, particularly for the women's game. Oh, a hundred percent. And uh, really, really enjoyed it, and mm-hmm. I'm going to really miss it. I know I'm really going to miss it. Like it's been cricket every single day, mm. and. I mean, there'll still be cricket this year, but, you know, it's it's not going to be the same and I'm very excited for next year. Anyway, what have we got coming up in today's episode? So we have two interviews. Um, we also talk about the Eliminator and we talk about the final. Whoa, a lot to pack in then. A and lot. It's going to be a long episode. Yes. So who's our first interview with? So our first interview is with Birmingham Phoenix's Thea Brooks. Never heard of her. Does she play any <laughs> games? She's number one hydration squad for Birmingham Phoenix. What does that mean? Um, you do the drinks. Okay. You've got to keep the whole team hydrated. Um, but Nathia was amazing to talk to. And um, maybe you can tell by the way we had the conversation, but we already know her. Um, so she was my coach last season. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was absolutely wonderful to talk to. And I thought she gave a really, really interesting perspective because, you know, a lot of the people we've spoken to they've had really good competitions and, you know, they've played every game and, you know, they've either scored loads of runs or taken loads of wickets. And actually to have a very different perspective, um, I think is really important and, you know, show the reality of sport that, you know, you don't get what you want, essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, So enjoy. What a day. I mean, tomorrow. Oh, honestly. No words. <laughs> no words can describe what I guess I'm feeling as well as the girls. I mean, to be where we were, what, say, a week and a half ago? Yeah. I mean, everyone thought we were dead and buried. Mm-hmm. Um, but here we are, through to the Eliminators. You know, it's... Who'd have thought it? <laughs> just amazing, yeah. And, I mean, I think... Eve Jones has just been a massive part of that, hasn't she? I mean, we we saw her get a century, um, well, a couple of months ago um, uh, for Central Sparks, and uh, she's just gone on and on and on since then. She's been amazing. Oh, she's been fantastic. I mean, I think so, someone like Eve, she's been in, in and around England for a long, long time, and actually she's developed so much with her age and in her game. Yeah, but she's definitely... Uh, She's definitely improved. Like I knew Eve when she was a young little whipper at um, Shropshire. And actually, to see her progress the way she has, has been outstanding. I, England need a left-handed batter. It's very difficult, obviously, to say that she's 
you know, she is doing so well at the moment. And I know there's questions of her of her in and around the squad, but you know, she's got a lot of competition as well elsewhere, which is uh, um, but she I mean, she just needs to keep doing what she's doing. She's been a fantastic leader for us at Sparks and she's been a massive uh, input for the Phoenix as well. Yeah, so um we kind of just wanted to start off with what's your cricket story? My story, wow. Um well I, I started when I was very, very young. So cricket's been in my family for a very long time. Um my grandfather was chairman at my first cricket club. My dad played, that was at Old Hill Cricket Club. Um my dad then played, my sister, who's uh, five years older than me, played, my brother, who's three years older than me, he played, and then I played as well. So I reckon I started and my first session when I was about four, so many, many moons ago. <laughs> um, but it, it's been an absolute love for me. And the fact that I'm still in the game, you know, I'm, I'm really chuffed and I'm really proud to say that I'm still going, especially I've been able to see and be involved in the whole transition of women's cricket, which has been absolutely phenomenal. Like it's, it's such an emotional journey that we've been on, like everyone together, um, obviously going from... 2016 when the Super League was announced like that was the next big thing and to even have kind of a snippet of us on Sky Sports I remember seeing it and I thought oh god it's like everyone on my phone messaging around I'm like did you see Sky Sports news we're on we're on you can see me I'm running um, <laughs> but from that to I remember the first game that we played on Sky again I remember it very you know clear as day we loved for lightning played Western Storm at Taunton, Stefani Taylor got three wickets in one over. I was the third. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's, but, you know, it's one of those where we're playing in these stadiums, we're getting these crowds, and actually to be a part of the 100 as well, it, it's absolutely phenomenal. Like, I don't know if you've been to games yourselves, but you've seen the crowds that we're getting, and it's mm. absolutely fantastic. It's, it's, it's surreal, and... Even though I'd absolutely love to be playing, as we know, you know, I think number one hydration squad here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's one of those where actually the team is so strong and seeing the girls succeed is and being a part of that is incredible. Like, yeah, of course we want to be playing. Of course we do. But, you know, you're, you still play a massive role. And I think your attitude, behaviours and everything that you bring to it it, it does. It makes a massive difference to the team environment. Yeah. Well, we, yeah, we have been to one game. Uh, we we went to see Trent Rockets against Manchester Originals last Sunday. Oh, uh, nice. Which was great. Um, so Polly, you see, is wearing a Manchester Originals top at the moment. I said I would change it when I found out we're doing this. <laughs> I did night. see. I did. Oh, well, Manchester Originals aren't through to the Eliminators, so I've got to change my team. <laughs> 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 Honestly, well, well, I've got a spare shirt for you, uh, shirt for you, Paul. Don't worry. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we we uh, we had Eve Jones on the pod a, about uh, a month ago, and so she was um, putting yes. pressure on Polly. Then, yeah. but uh, but Kate Cross had gotten in earlier <laughs> and uh, and convinced Polly to be a Manchester fan. Um, but we're really pleased because the the other game we've got tickets for is tomorrow. So oh, we're, we're, we're getting on the train tomorrow morning and coming yes. down to the Oval. So we definitely will be mm -hmm. cheering on as sort of, you know, as Manchester fans <laughs> cheering on Birmingham, our local team. <laughs> sorry. sorry. I didn't realise we were from Manchester, Polly, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I always said in, in the games when Birmingham are playing, I'll always back Birmingham, apart from when they play Manchester. So, Sounds like Manchester United. It's just, it's, <laughs> this is really awkward. This is turning awkward again. <laughs> <laughs> no, not uh, but, uh, but how is the, is the level of professionalism really different at the 100 compared to what you used to, you know, um, playing uh, Rachel Hale Flint or Charlotte Edwards Trophy? It is, to be honest. Um, I think for me, again, like I've, I've seen the transitions from domestic to professional and, you know, the way in which you carry yourselves in the public, um, people recognise you, uh, especially it's difficult in COVID times. That's been the main difference, I think. Um, and just being aware of your surroundings. So it's so easy to um, put something on social media or be seen in the street and people take photos of you and, and you don't know. And actually there are people out there, especially in COVID times, and we've had this happen to us and I'm sure other people have as well. They're trying, you know, they're trying to catch you out. So whether it be you're talking to family around the boundary, they'll be like, oh, this person's not wearing a mask, send it in. 
like that's and that's quite difficult so you've just got to be really sharp and thinking about that especially with like I say during COVID but um it is it's it's a very different kind of way you got to carry yourself in a professional environment and because in essence people like I say people's eyes are on you and you, you're a role model now for other people and actually even even though we say it's professional let's say 80 percent of the girls playing in this tournament still have other jobs I mean I obviously coached at how Owen and teaching I'm, I'm trying to do other things to build this um uh, this wage that I can <laughs> live on but um you know hopefully we see as the competition has been so successful you know we've brought in revenue I think actually the hundreds probably been better for the women than it has the men in terms of building their foundation and actually displaying the quality of cricket that's on show I mean we've seen some incredible pe- uh, performances across the board and um, like Jemima Rodriguez getting her 92 or 40 yard like that that's insane. The catches that people are taking, the fielding's incredible. Um, I think we are see, we're seeing a massive rise. And actually, there's so many more girls now that are fighting for these spots and very much can. I, I mean, I know I'm other end of the scale of age, but it's so good to see someone like Alice Capsley come in at 16 years old. Like, it's unreal to see what she's doing. So I think it's, it's given so many people be- good opportunities. Yeah, 100%. And I mean, I think a massive part is also the international players. So obviously your team had you know, Shafali Burma. What was it like kind of training alongside her? Oh, she's just brilliant. Like, training with Shaf's just, she's always got a smile on her face, but she knows what she wants, which is even better. You know, she'll go into the net and if you're bowling, so I was bowling against her and I was bowling just with, I mean, I'm an off spinner, so I don't bowl with a new, a new shiny ball, do I? But you know, I just chose one. I thought, you know, I'll get a bit of turn here. And she just looked at me and went, no, I need a new ball. Because she's an opening batter. So she, mm-hmm. She's training with a purpose. And I was like, oh, damn, I don't bother with a new ball. I, I, I hope this goes well. <laughs> um, but, um, but yeah, someone like Shaf is you, just talking to them and being around them. You learn so much. Like just watching her play, the type of shots that she does. Um, you always feed something off her and it's not just her you know the likes of Erin Burns and Katie Mack I did a fielding session with Katie and she's just little nuggets that she gives you you know because I'm always still learning but um, yeah just little things uh, uh, with Erin as well as an off spinner you know just talking to her about field settings you know it's it's not so much giving technique um, about my skill it's more the tactical side of how you think as well so that's what I've learned massively from those girls yeah um I guess we want a bit of an insight into what is a typical day like in the hundred oh wow um so for us let's give you a training day so we'll I mean get up go to breakfast down in the hotel obviously we just again because of covid relations you can only have uh, regulation sorry we can only have say three to a table um so it's all bit difficult we have to do lateral flow tests every morning so we get those in for 9 30 to our physio um get it done take a photo send it in we do monitoring as well every day so we have to make sure that that's filled in so temperature checks um uh, kind of like a mood uh, uh scale i guess uh, <laughs> how we are how our body is so if we're feeling any niggles or our stress levels our sleep how many hours sleep did we get um lots of little things like that um, then we'll head down to training. Uh, it's usually split up into three groups. So obviously you don't want everyone together in too much of a capacity across. The, it's about three hour sessions that we have. So we'll try and get smaller groups that have a bit more of an intense session per it's usually fielding nets and then either a gym session or another form of net session that we have. Um, but yeah, it's either morning or evening and then we'll just chill together as a team. Usually it's go back to the hotel and watch the hundred. So <laughs> every day we've been watching different games. And as you can tell from you know, the other day when um, Welsh played Spirit, uh, we were obviously very, uh, very happy with that result. We were kept on our toes for a long time. It was time. touch and go um, for a while, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I mean, I don't know if uh, the Welsh girls uh, <laughs> were against Birmingham at all. But, um, <laughs> no, it's, it, the thing is, you know, again, we talk about the calibre of players that are, go, um, that are playing right now. And, you know, it, yes, Spirit had them 
looked, you know, they were quite comfortable. They'd obviously taken a few wickets early, but, uh, you know, the calibre of players, I I never think that if it's a low scoring game, it's a rubbish game of cricket, because actually you just got to take your hat off to the bowler and say, well, the bowling team were better. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's difficult when, say, it's a low scoring game of all out for 80. It's like, well, it's not a rubbish game. It's just the bowling team were better. And, you know, that's they've outperformed them in that skill. So actually, it was still a good game of cricket. Just unfortunate that obviously Welsh didn't get as many runs as I'd like to have done because they definitely would have wanted to not finish at the bottom. So. so as someone who, you know, cricket is not your full time job. How do you balance your life around cricket? Because what you described to me over the hundred is that has been a full time job, yeah. it, it, possibly in a way that cricket isn't normally for you. So how do you balance your life at the moment and, and how's it going to look in in the months ahead? So I say, fortunately, as a teacher, um, you obviously get your summer holidays. So I'm a teacher as well, I need to say. So. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> you know, so I hope you had a lovely holiday. Um, Still am. So, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So for me, um, obviously teaching, I get a good amount of holiday for the summer so it actually didn't cross over so it was about a week I think after we finished school mm -hmm. um that I was in the 100 bubble and then we finish obviously uh Saturday so then I think we go back to school we've got pre-season on the 31st of August so fortunately for me it falls into this holiday which is fantastic um I know other girls that I'm, I've played with or played against they've had to take time off work um, so it'll be interesting talking to one of those about how they've done that. But um, obviously, it is difficult. I'm very fortunate to have this time. But it is difficult because, as you'll know, as a teacher, we need this time. <laughs> yeah. So actually, I'm going to be straight back into it. And it, it's going to be tough. It will be tough. But And we go straight back into the Hey Ho Flint Trophy. So next Tuesday, we're traveling down to Hove and playing on Wednesday. So it's... In, in essence, like there's still no rest, really. And then we play, I think, the finals, our last cricket for the Hey Ho Flint or Charlotte Edwards Trophy. I think Hey Ho Flint's later. It's about the 25th of September. Yeah. So it goes into when I go back to cricket. And you do have to be mindful because obviously it's not just the cricket you do. It's everything else that comes around it. So on a normal school day, I'll have to fit in time to go to the gym and eat properly. And it's, Oops, yeah. it, it, it takes a lot out of you. It does. You've got to be pretty pretty switched on and prepared which you know sometimes I'm good at sometimes I'm not it you know I'm, I'm human I'm not gonna sit here and say I do everything down to the book because I don't sometimes I don't have time um so it, it is tough it is tough and I guess you're we're living in this in-between time for the women's game aren't we between yeah. something that's been purely amateur into something that's becoming more and more professional uh, on a not just a national but a regional basis and hopefully yeah. that'll will keep on expanding so so your equivalent in 10 years time that's assuming you're not still playing cricket in 10 years time <laughs> but, uh, you never know i'm not that old <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's but your equivalent in 10 years time it could be just earning money as as a full-time cricketer um, i think it will be to be honest yeah i mean you look at i mean i, I can't believe that we're earning money in domestic anyway so yeah. the fact that we get that there's professional contracts there for the girls at sparks yeah. is is unbelievable like I never thought that would ever happen for women's cricket and the fact that it has is sensational so you know they get a good amount um hopefully like you say in the next x amount of years there will be contracts for everybody in that team which you could only imagine that's where they're going and um, so who knows I mean I might, I might be around but um, <laughs> you know my, my aim and my ambition is to still fight for a contract you know I know it's difficult because I've got this teaching lifestyle, it would be taking a massive pay cut or do I, can I do it where I do half teaching, half, the, I, I don't know, I've, I've got, that's something obviously to think about, but um, I guess for, for someone like me, well, yeah, it is just a work-life balance at the minute, but who knows where the future will take us really. Um, but in terms of the hundreds, obviously with equal prize money with the men, like that's incredible. So that's obviously something that they've thought about. Um, in terms of the money that you get um, contracted for the tournament, I think obviously there's a massive significant difference. I know there was, there's been a lot of talk about this in the media anyway, but I think after seeing the merchandise being sold, the people that were getting in, you can't not justify 
upping their salary or upping our salary even for the for the contract for the summer for the for the hundred you I don't I can't see them being able to not because of how much of a success uh, a success it's been like if you know you get crowds of two thousand people in every day for our games you know yeah fair enough you know you've got a justification but we're getting 10 11 to fifteen thousand people uh, that is sensational crowds and to yeah. be a part of it, it's just crazy to see and hopefully there'll be this knock-on effect as well for mm -hmm. the charlotte edwards and the rachel hale flint in mm -hmm. september where you're going to see people who've been to the 100 and got to know the names and the faces wanting to yeah. see those people play again. Yeah, definitely. And I think I listened to Butch, uh, Mark Butcher uh, on the last game. And he said, actually, COVID has been a massive blessing for us because I don't know if you heard him say that um, the fact that COVID has hit meant that the men and the women had to play double headers. Mm -hmm. So originally they were going to be, obviously, the women would be at Worcester, Beckenham, you know, um, second team grounds and played on different days. Whereas actually having this now that we're playing before the men's on every single game, you know, people are going to come in. They might not come in for the whole of the women's game. Fine, granted. But they get they catch the latter end. Mm -hmm. They think, oh, this is good. And then they'll start coming, you know, we'll come to the next one for the game. And actually the, having that crossover of a, I think it's only about an hour or so isn't it mm -hmm. in between yeah, that's right, it's an hour. yeah yeah like that's um like that's awesome because an hour will go by like that in a game it will it will fly by whereas before you know you've had two and a half hour t20 an hour and a half gap two hours and then another and it's like oh it's a bit of a long long day whereas yeah. you're asking people to with the hundreds obviously you've shortened the game to make it nice and quick and sharp and fast um but then you watch the women's have the break have the men's it is still a bit of a longer day but in essence you know people are coming they just want to see cricket and it's been an absolute blessing for us it really has and look at the grounds that we're playing at as well like i mean yeah we i am um, i haven't been to trent bridge for about 40 years and it is just amazing that was yeah. a, a brilliant place to go to i'm looking forward to going to the oval again mm -hmm. haven't been there for many 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 years and it's all been redeveloped since but yeah the whole sense of occasion mm. big stadiums you know the fireworks and the fire flying up and that sort of thing it's I mean they're gimmicks aren't they but it does make it feel really special as an atmosphere yeah it is massively I mean it, it's meant to be entertaining that's what it is isn't it it's, it's a show that's what the mm -hmm. hundred is meant to be you know you've got the music you've got this big stage you've got mm -hmm. the fireworks which I'm still so scared of when they go off <laughs> uh, I, I hate loud noises and I'm always just like Come on, girls. <laughs> um, but um it is it's a show for kids and you, you know you've seen the amount of kids that are there it's it just, it's so nice to see like i've had some of my students turn up and it Brilliant. you know it, it tugs on the heartstrings a little bit because you think we're doing this for you you guys are going to be here in the next 10 15 years this is you this is your stage and mm -hmm. you know we're inspiring the next generation so it's how can you not be happy with that yeah, I mean, speaking of entertainment, what was it like dancing on the stage at Edgebaston? <laughs> we had an opportunity <laughs> <laughs> to have a bit of fun, you know. Uh, oh, it was so much fun, you know. It's we were trying, we were working out it for ages because they were like, "Oh, we just want you to come up and have a bit of a dance." And we we're like, "Oh God, like, what do we do here? Like, what, <laughs> what song do we do? Do we just go pop song and like kind of throw a few shakes around or whatever?" Um, and then someone said Saturday night, and we went. Yes, because then the crowd will get involved. Mm -hmm. So like, here we go. Um, it was just great fun, you know, big smiles. It's you kind of forget about everything that's going on. Because I think they didn't they have a tactical timeout or something. It came at yeah. the right time. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't realise it was like, oh, brilliant. So and obviously you look up, you see yourself on the screen, you think, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, but at the time you just you you have fun. And I think that that's so important. So I've not seen any other kind of franchise do that like get them up on stage they might have done I'm, I'm not sure but because I don't know if you see that on Sky I'm not 100% but um yeah it was just so good because you feel really involved with the crowd you know when you come out of the stage people down the side are like oh well done girls and take photos and it's just like yeah, you know you do it for them don't you it's you don't do it to put yourself out there you do it because they want to see you make a bit of a fool of yourself and look like a human and uh, it's I think that's really good connecting with the crowd that way mm -hmm. yeah I think the, I mean, the other thing with with cricket and its development is is the role of the local club and you know what you've done 
in the last 12 months at Hales Owen for the women's team there has just been absolutely amazing. I mean, Polly's game, it just seems has, has come on loads um, it, and is really sort of enthused by it. So it's just been absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. No, it's it's been... It's been wonderful. So I've not done a lot of stuff like that in terms of coaching. I've done obviously a lot with school, but nothing in terms of team base. And I just wish I could give more of my time. And I hate the fact that I've had to obviously come away for the hundreds and leave you guys to it. And in, in a sense, um, it is really difficult. It is really, really difficult. And I, I do wish I could give you a lot more. I wish I could come to your games and everything like that. But, you know, hopefully maybe in future we could get back to it. But it's, it's been so good. <laughs> I mean, to have the range of people there from Caitlin as an 11 year old girl mm. to, I'm not going to say who the oldest is, I have no <laughs> idea. But like, but like Emma as a mum, let's say, she'll kill me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, you know, you've got a massive range there in terms of ability, age, experience. And to be amongst that and to think that you've had an impact on someone in some way, that for me is the best thing that you know the best thing that could happen and you know the job of a coach is to in essence be redundant at the game so I'll give you everything that I possibly can and then when you're at the game it's you it's not me so I hope that obviously Polly you did enjoy it and uh, <laughs> are continuing to enjoy it mm -hmm. and that, that's the biggest thing for me because we've had different people come in as well and everyone's so welcome so, well. so uh, I mean my philosophy of that is just you know everyone is welcome and everyone needs to get time I'm not just trying to focus on other people. It's I want everyone to get better in whatever capacity that it might be. And the fact that you're continuing to play, that's the outcome. Because uh, in essence, Paul, you could be wearing that Manchester original shirt on Old Trafford. You know, like, that could happen. And that's what I want to happen. So it'll be awesome. Yeah, I mean, you've been so valuable. And, you know, we'll keep doing your warm-up routine. You know, we love those stretches when we're lying on our back. It's our favourite one. <laughs> We do it. We do it here all the time. <laughs> now, I'll still send some stuff through to uh, Shaz and Vinny as well. And, you know, everything I'm doing here, I'll try and replicate it with you guys, because I mean, why wouldn't you? Like, that's the art of it. So if we're doing it here, surely you should be doing it at the club. Just replicate what they're doing at a different level. So no, good. I'm glad. Yeah, have you been given free popcorn? <laughs> you know what? We hadn't, and no one else has been given free stuff until we tweeted them, just like, but a kiss. Uh, <laughs> as your ass wants, huh? <laughs> danger. So they did actually give us a load of free popcorn, which was awesome. Um, hopefully they'll give us more, <laughs> but a kiss, if you're out there. Um, obviously they weren't out at the end of the tournament, but uh, no, it was good. So they said, you know, yeah, we'll send you some stuff through if uh, you kind of put some stuff on social media. So that's what we did. And... We got some stuff through, which was awesome. I think I took about 50 bags of sweet. So <laughs> they, they went very quickly. <laughs> uh, it's good, though. But I don't think other teams have uh, received stuff. So that might have to no. be something. That no. Yeah, everyone, yeah, everyone we've spoken to, they've been like, no, we haven't had anything. Yeah, I think Mignon Dupree had had, be, hadn't even yeah. heard of McCoy's. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what a wonderful woman! She's so nice. Yeah, you're you're uh, you'll be in the same episode as her. So. <gasps> Chris, <laughs> come on, Mignon. <laughs> and, you know, Mignon's a really nice girl. I've unfortunately I've not met her properly because she was at Vipers the year before I was there. I'd have loved to have met her properly. Then she went to um, Loughborough. Yeah, she's a. I've been told she's a very very nice girl. So I'm mm -hmm. glad. Yeah, you've had some pretty decent names, haven't you, on this? It's been I know, great. I think we just blag it. <laughs> no, it's Why amazing. Come and speak to us? Yeah, so no, we've not had, at all. So we've had Kate and Alex, and we've had yeah. Ellie Threlkeld, Georgie Boyce, yeah, no. uh, Emily Windsor. Yeah, Katie Levick, um, Bryony Smith, yeah. wow. Eve Jones. So and, just, and Mignon Dupree. Yeah. And, and then and then the Thea Brooks, the, the yeah. very pi pinnacle. <laughs> I'm here always. <laughs> pinnacle. Nice. Oh, no, it's been absolutely lovely to speak to you and see you both. Yeah, you too. Yeah, no and yeah, all the best for tomorrow. Uh, oh, especially awesome. if, Thank you so especially much. if selected. <laughs> yeah. They might just be keeping you back for the final, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe they're just keeping me fit throughout the whole competition, ready for yeah. the final. Imagine. <laughs> I feel like ev I'm everyone needs to be hydrated. So, <laughs> you know, essential role. Hey, it, you know, you laugh. It is an essential role. No, it, it is. And, it you know, for those 
out there, and I think this is really important actually, for those out there who are deselected drops or whatever it might be, to still hold your head high and train hard, work hard, practice hard, because the competition is always so high. And I'm very much, I'm a massive believer. So if you've got two players, me and say A and other who are, who's in the squad and they're here, it's like, don't think that they're just better than you because they're not. They've just got a different skill, um, which is fine. But if you want to get better, you need to obviously push yourself, challenge yourself, and you want to get better than them and in the squad, you push yourself to here, which then gives these guys a kick up the bum, which will then go there. And then you constantly just climb the ladder and your team only gets stronger. So actually, you can't see being dropped as a negativity or, uh, you know, something. It's, it's obviously devastating. It's obviously devastating. The only thing that I want to be doing most out of everything is to be playing. And it is hard, especially when you're isolating. It's been a flipping hard summer because you train so hard you are isolating you can't just have a cuddle from someone that just to think you know it's okay pat on the back that's that's been tough but your role is so important it's not just 11 people it's the whole 15 of us we are a squad we're a unit we win lose together I say we draw together but that's <laughs> probably not going to happen this day um but yeah it's it's one of those you're a 15 you're a you're a massive family and actually if I was to walk around with a sulk head down that would affect a lot of other people and you know it's kind of a mirrored mirrored behavior response and um, so if you're upbeat you've got to be buzzing because what you do especially in the hundreds flipping on we're, ru we're running on every five balls it's horrific <laughs> it's, it's hard work and actually what you do is so critical to the team in terms of your attitude and what you actually do physically for them, you know, even helping them in a warm up, you know, giving bowls to them or throwdowns, anything, mitting, you know, something, you're just critical. So never be, you're allowed to be disheartened, but never be disappointed to the point where you think, oh, well, I'm just not good enough. Because you are good enough. You just got to compete. It's, that's the probably the best thing about, or the main point I'd say about the difference of it being professional is that you can't just I, I'm always massively a person on I care a lot about other people which is fine it's a good thing but I need to be in this environment I need to be well I'm going to bat now I'm going to bat for this time I'm going to bowl like if I'm I'm very much a oh you you have another no, it's all right you need to just crack on whereas it is it, it's kind of it is dog eat dog even though you are a team it is dog eat dog you know everyone wants to be on the pitch but I think that's probably the main difference that I've I've learned. Is you've got to be a bit more selfish in your game. Mm -hmm. mm, interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. I hope it goes really well tomorrow. Thank you. Um, and it will. We're going to win the tournament. Honestly, we've come from down the bottom, bottom of the table a week and a half ago. Everyone yeah. wrote, wrote us off. We're going to win it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think you know you, you've got a really good chance. I think you know an, an oval were, were not impressive in their last game. Uh, which is, you know, it could be a dangerous thing for you, uh, but it, it, there is a sense that you're very much on the rise and they're maybe peaked yeah. a little bit too early. Uh, yeah. Southern in the final it, it, are a tough yeah. team, aren't they? They are. They are massively. And, you know, they've got a lot of talent in that squad who are performing, which is mm. fine, but you want it to be an exciting final, don't you? It's, so, it's close margins in this, what it isn't is. it? Yeah. It is what it is. And, you know, I think we've been absolutely phenomenal in terms of the team that we've had. We've definitely, I mean, we were, we were going to have the likes of Sophie Vine, Elise Perry, Ash Gardner, three of the top all rounders mm. in the world come and play. And having Shaf, Katie and Erin has been incredible because mm -hmm. having people think, but probably they looked at us and went, oh, they've gone from being probably the strongest core to somewhere in the middle because of that change. But actually, Katie, Erin and Shaft have all been absolutely critical and they've been awesome amongst the team. But if you think about our squad, like Shaft's, Shaft's a solid Indian international cricketer. Erin's mm -hmm. played some games for Australia. Katie's not played for Australia. Um, Amy's solid England wicketkeeper. Georgia is a squad player for international. Kirsty's obviously unfortunately not in the setup anymore so in essence we've got two genuine internationals and I'm saying this in the nicest way I'm not putting mm -hmm. anyone down yeah. two genuine internationals in our squad 
and saying that, seeing how far we've come, yeah. is outstanding. And that says a lot for the team. And the fight and drive and passion that these girls have, or we have, I don't want to say that as if I'm not there, <laughs> that we have, is, is surreal. And that, that, the heart that we have, and the heart that the girls play on the pitch and show on the pitch, that's why we're winning games now. Mm. The fight is yes. incredible. Mm. Mm. That's the difference. Well, we look forward to seeing some evidence of that on the pitch tomorrow and we'll mm -hmm. be cheering you along mm -hmm. in our Thank Manchester you. shirt. Oh, I'm, I'm going to find you. I'm going to throw a shirt at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll Amazing. probably be wearing this. But, you know. Yeah, make sure it's washed. <laughs> <laughs> now, we will try and come and find you if, if there's a, yeah, a gathering too. point at the end yeah, of, yeah, of, of yeah, the Yeah, 100%. Match. 100%. Do so. Um, All right. Awesome, yeah. guys. We're really looking Safe travels to tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. yes. Take care. See you soon. Bye. 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 You're listening to the Naughty Child podcast with me, Richard. And me, Polly. I'm the dad. And I'm the daughter. And uh, Polly, the next bit we're going to talk mm -hmm. about the Eliminator. Yes. Now, the Eliminator happened on Friday and yep. we were there. We were there. We went to uh, to the Oval, which I've never been to the Oval, Oval before, so that was really, really exciting. It's a nice ground as well. It is. Well, I have been to the Oval before, mm -hmm. and this is a bit one of those weird things that mm -hmm. I remember going to the Oval. I couldn't quite remember uh, the, the date of it and so on, but I remember it was England against Australia in 1980. Australia weren't touring in 1980, but they were over in England for the Centenary Test Match. And after that, played some uh, one-day internationals. So my dad took me and my brother mm -hmm. to the Oval to watch England play Australia. Jeff Boycott got 99. Mm -hmm. uh, England won mm -hmm. that game. And it was on the 20th of August, 1980. 41 years to the day before we returned to the Oval for this game. It's so crazy when there are things like that where they happen on the same day. Um but no, I thought it was very, very nice, nice ground. Mm. Um, and it was packed. Mm -hmm. Like, I think, if we get this stat wrong, I think the, like, halfway through the women's game, uh, w when they, like, take the total of the amount of people, I think it's 15,000. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, big audience. And it was, you know, very lively. And I thought it was just a really good game of cricket. It was indeed. So it was between um, Oval invincibles and mm -hmm. birmingham phoenix uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what happened so oval invincibles um won by 20 runs mm -hmm. and i think until re um, maybe not near the very end but I, I i didn't think oval would win i was convinced birmingham would win um so oval um batted first mm -hmm. and set 114 for seven which is pretty low. It is. I, I agree with you. I think it was a below par score. Mm -hmm. And I thought Birmingham have got this in yeah. the bag. I mean, Danny Van Neerkirk got out for two. Mm -hmm. Bowled by Emily Arlott, caught by Marie Kelly. You think she's been one of the main people in this tournament, especially mm. for Oval. And you think, oh, it's not going to work. And uh, George Adams, opening batter, got out for four. Um, but I mean, Fran Wilson got 21. Um, Marazan Cap thirty seven, Alice Capsi twenty six. So, you know that I guess in the end it was enough, but it just didn't look like enough. And Birmingham have managed to set you know better totals than that and chase down. So, yeah, I was convinced it was going Birmingham's way. It was that Cap Capsi combination in the yeah. middle of the innings, wasn't it, mm -hmm. that steered them towards getting a, a defendable total. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, but there's some good bowling by Birmingham. Kirsty yeah. Gordon, uh, two for 22 from her 20 balls, in particularly impressed. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we were very hopeful. And uh, Birmingham Phoenix came into bat. And what happened? So, Katie Mack. So, Shafali Burma. Oh, is yeah, Shafali Burma's not, not playing. So, Katie Mack is promoted yeah. up the order to open with Eve Jones. Mm -hmm. Katie Mack uh, from three balls gets out. Zero. Mm -hmm. Then, um, and then Amy Jones comes in actually, mm -hmm. and so Eve Jones doesn't have the strike. 
So Amy, um, Amy hits a few fours, um, and then I think a single, and then Eve Jones gets the strike, mm. and from her first ball, she gets out again, bowled by Marisan Cap, um, caught by Sarah Bryce, which is exactly what happened with Katie Mack. It was I'm pretty sure the same shot as well. It's just yeah, it was so really unfortunate, sad. and mm-hmm. I, I felt so sorry for Eve Jones because yeah. this was her part. Ball. Yeah. And she would, you know, had she got going, she'd have steered them home. Oh, 100%. I have absolutely no doubt. But I think it's because she had to wait so long for her first ball. She was th- out there for a while. I think yeah. it was the 11th ball of yeah. the innings. She was there for 11 minutes. Yeah. Which was um, so, so she'd been there a while. And a, as you said, Amy Jones did a couple of fours. Mm-hmm. It felt like the innings was moving on. Yeah. If she were facing the first ball of the innings, I don't think she'd have played that no. shot. It was a wide one. She misjudged it, gone inside edge, went to the wicket keeper. Yeah. So we were gutted for Eve because yeah. I, I was convinced yeah. this was the platform yeah. and she was going to really, really perform. But, you know, that is sport, isn't yeah. it? You, you know, you're not going to get it right every time. Yeah. And I mean, Amy Jones, she got 35, which mm. was, you know, very good score. Um, Erin Burns got 23. Yes, and when those um, two were together, that was yeah. the moment. And, and you know, the the fact they'd lost both at openers for Ducks mm. didn't matter, actually. No. Because they were heading for a win, yeah. without a doubt. Mm-hmm. And then there was one moment that turned it. Yeah. And that was Tash Farron's catch. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a very good catch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it, they called a timeout, hadn't they? Um, yeah, so this this was spectacular. I mean, it shows the great captaincy from Danny Van Newkirk because mm. um, they called the strategic timeout and from then they were just so much better. You know, they're mm. bowling, they're fielding. And yeah, it. I mean, it was the ideal kind of advertisement for a strategic timeout mm. just to, you know, show that the team can turn around like that and just wicket spell. Yeah, so Burns and Jones went in it quick succession mm. Farrant making that great catch to dismiss yeah. Burns um, and then it was this procession of batters yeah. that we've seen before no one really um, making many runs at all struggling to get the ball away and uh, they were all out for 94 so yeah. we were we were gutted for them because I was convinced that Birmingham were going mm. to win but really well done to um, Oval <laughs> This is the Naughty Child podcast, looking at the 100 cricket, and we have got to the final. Uh, Oval Invincibles against Southern Brave, which has happened uh, today, um, Saturday the 21st of August. Mm -hmm. Polly, tell us all about it. I could not believe what I was witnessing. (laughs) Um, We suggested that we did, like, a a live reaction (laughs) to it, like, I guess every 25 balls, and maybe record a bit, but I decided... Um, not to record and just kind of write it down and go through it. Um, but Oval ended up winning by 48 runs, which... That's a hammering. Yeah, that really is. And going into it, you would have not thought that would happen because so Southern Brave automatically qualified because they were top of the mm-hmm. table and they had they were undefeatable apart from Manchester Originals mm-hmm. beating them, which I will forever be so happy about. Um, but they, they just seemed the stronger side going into the game. Um, and maybe you thought... You know, Oval did win yesterday, which obviously got them the place in the final, but you think maybe they were tired. They haven't had time to kind of think of how they're going to play this final. And last time they were beaten by Southern. So I think the odds were almost against them, um, but it just all went wrong. Everything that could have gone wrong for Southern went wrong. So Oval batted first, didn't they? Yeah. 121 for six, which my Mm -hmm. thought is it's okay. It's not a great score. Yeah. But it's an okay score. Yeah. Who got the runs for them? So, um, Danny Van Nierkirk, 26. Fran Wilson, 25. Marazan Cap, 26. Alex, Alice Capsey, 18. Um, so again, no big No scorers. massive ones, but yeah, quite a few in the 20s. Um, so yeah, 121 for six. And so at this point I was thinking, well, actually Southern Brave, you know, they've they've got big hitters in their team. Mm. Um, and, you know, they're without Smitty Mandana, mm. so maybe they would struggle a bit. But, you know, they've got they've got Danny Wyatt, they've got Sphere Dunkley. I didn't think they would struggle, um, but seemingly they did. <laughs> um, 
And this was extraordinary, yeah. wasn't it? And it was another example of uh, Van Niekerk's captaincy, yeah. which was just amazing. Mm -hmm. And it was one of those, I suppose with captaincy, you make lots of decisions mm -hmm. which go unnoticed because they'd have no impact on the yeah. game. Whereas it seemed like every move she made... It had such a big impact, yeah. And I just... It, it started with a wide, though, didn't yes. it? So I was thinking, oh no, this isn't this isn't a great start. Um, and then after four balls, Danny Wyatt got out for zero. Well, Marisan Cap was bowling, wasn't she? Yeah. And she was bowling it outside off stump yeah. and swinging it away from the batter. And so the first one swung so far; it mm -hmm. was a wide. And then after that, second ball, Danny Wyatt swishes mm -hmm. at it and misses mm -hmm. it. Third ball, she swishes at it and misses it. Fourth ball, nicks it behind to the keeper. Yeah. Um, and then it was the exact, was it, I think it was the exact same way that Gabby, um, well, Dunkley. Do, so exactly, Dunkley was uh, the next one out. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so the same, the same over, mm -hmm. uh, or the same set of balls, if you like, because again, Van Nieke decided at that point that she was going to keep cap bowling yes. yeah. and she's going to put herself in as a second slip. Now yes. at no point has anyone. Mm -hmm. fielded a second slip in 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 a hundred mm -hmm. game and she bowls it wide again outside of to dunkley who swooshes at it mm -hmm. gets a thick edge which goes guess where second in, slip yeah. <laughs> into the hands of van Neerkirk, which it was such a good catch and i think it was one of those things where it someone's very obviously been placed somewhere mm -hmm. and it just pays off mm -hmm. and it yeah just just seeing their faces it was it was quite incredible. Um, so, yeah, Sophia Dunkley got out for zero yeah. as well. And in the same set of ten, uh, Gabby Lewis uh, mm -hmm. tries to play a ball over, sort of pull a ball over onto the leg side, mm -hmm. gets a top edge and is caught by Alice Capsi. Yeah. So their first three batters all out for Ducks. Mm -hmm. It is not a great start. No. Um, Sarah Taylor... Um, not Sarah Taylor, Stefani Taylor. Yes. Why is everyone called Taylor <laughs> in this competition? There are awesome. three Taylors. <laughs> um, she got out for 18. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when she got, I think she managed to get to 11, I was thinking, you know, this is good. This is the first, the first person actually scored anything, mm -hmm. but first in, in double figures. So I had a bit of hope and then, no, she got out for 18. Um, bowled by Van Nierkirk and stumped by Sarah Bryce. Um, my Boucher got run out for seven. Uh, Amanda Jade Wellington got out for zero. Anya Shrubsole got out for one. Um, then actually Fee Morris, she, uh, she came in and uh, 23, she hit 23, mm -hmm. then got run out. Um, Tara Norris um, got oh this is a great she just got bowled by Capsi it wasn't even that much of a great delivery mm -hmm. but it went there 11 um, and they just just wickets were falling and yes. it was it was going south and I think it, it, they'd you know maybe it's a thing of they didn't have much hope but it kind of felt they were just like it's it was just not working wasn't yeah. it? it was all uh, everything collapsed around mm -hmm. them so so yeah they they managed to survive almost to the end i think 98 balls yeah um before they were all out for for 75 mm -hmm. so 73, 73 73 all out which is you know but they were so far mm -hmm. off winning it, it was just terrible to watch it, it was a, an utter nightmare for them but absolutely brilliant play by mm -hmm. over invincibles you know a, a comprehensive win and well-deserved winners of the hundred mm -hmm. Okay, Polly, um, we said there were two guests on yeah. today. Our second guest mm -hmm. is... Mignon de Pret. I'm so excited. You work very well to get <laughs> Mignon de Pret, worldwide cricketing superstar. This is the first international cricketer we've got. Obviously, like, we've had England um, players on before, but to get, you know, former South African captain and Manchester original, it was, yeah... Very, very exciting. And she was so lovely. Um, she's one of the nicest people I've ever spoken to. She was she was amazing. Absolutely brilliant, um, yes. And lovely to see that you got yourself a beautiful shirt. You went for <laughs> <laughs> Um 
<gasps> yeah, we're actually from Birmingham, so I don't think many Birmingham fans are happy that we're supporting Manchester. <laughs> um, but no, we, we love the Manchester team. And we spoke to Kate Cross about six months ago and she told us to support Manchester. So we couldn't ignore the captain. Definitely not. No, thank you very much for the support. We really appreciate it. <laughs> um, so firstly, what's your cricket story? Um, well, I've actually started at the age of four. Um, so in South Africa, we've got a, a mini cricket program. Um, my dad used to be a coach of a team and my brother was playing in the, in the specific team my dad coached. Um, and one day I was always just a supportive sister. You know, I went to the games, watched it, but I made sure that I also had a nice little um, white T-shirt with the mini cricket logo on and shorts. And then one day one of the boys didn't make it to the game in time and my dad asked me if I want to step in. Um, and I actually ended up being the best batter for the day. And I think that's where my life started for the game. Yeah, I think a lot of people have a similar story if they have a brother who plays. So I'm exactly the same. My younger brother played and I was at training one day watching him. And one of the coaches was like, we have a girls team. Do you want to join? I was like, yeah, sure. So I think, yeah, a lot of people have that similar story. But it's exciting that actually maybe people will be coming into the England squad in 10 years and saying, I watched the 100 and I saw people like Mignon Dupree, I saw Kate Cross and I thought, I would love to do that. So that, I think that's really exciting. Well, that's awesome. Actually, um, we had uh, myself and Lizelle was on Alex and um, Kate Cross's podcast, Nobles. And we actually said that, like all of us, we exactly had this chat to say that every, every most of the women's cricket story starts the same. They started in the, in this uh, boy setup or something. But the nice thing is in, in a couple of years from now, there's going to be stories of people that said, we watched the hundred and that's why we fell in love with the sport. So I'm excited to keep an eye out for the future generation. And it feels, I think, like this is a real moment for women's sport globally, in a sense. So you've seen in the Olympics having things like the mixed relay and the mixed triathlon and so on. And there's much more of a thought of you know women's sport on very much on a par with men's sport. I think the 100 has just come right at the right moment for that. Yeah, definitely. And I think um, especially the the ECB has put a little, lot of effort towards promoting the women's game by having the standalone women's opening feature. I think that really was something special. And uh, we just said throughout the competition, um, we've had big crowds in the games. And um, we sometimes don't even get that amount of people in at um, South African cricket games. So for mm -hmm. us to play the domestic tournament and in, in front of a, a, a sold out crowd is something really special. So we've really enjoyed it. It's been a fantastic tournament. And I definitely think it's going to, um, put women's cricket on the map, map even further and like you say hopefully in the future a lot of girls will take up the sport because of watching the 100. Yeah I completely agree um, so what was your favourite game to play in the 100? Ooh that's a tough one I reckon the opening night that must be um, I know the result didn't go away but all in all I think that was really something special um, it was a bit of mixed emotions because we didn't really know what to expect um, but I think that, that was new for it was new waters for everybody so to have the opportunity to be one of the first teams to play it was really special the atmosphere is amazing i know we, we got to see becky hill so all in all i think that must have definitely been the highlight of, of this tournament so far um so we've seen some like incredible players across the tournaments you know jimmy rodriguez who i think has surprised everyone but who for you has stood out as an individual in this tournament yeah, definitely. I think I agree with you on um, Jamina Rodriguez. We actually close friends I know her quite well. And leading up into this tournament, I know she's been struggling a little bit with form. Um, and I actually had a chat with her and I said, you know what? Um, form, is, um, yeah, form is temporary, but class is permanent. And I think <laughs> she just... Um, and there was special focus. I know she's been struggling a little bit with, with international cricket and even in the India series before this. So for her to smash that 92 runs was really special. And I think she's still... Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's still the leading run scorer for the tournament. So, That's right, um, yeah. and and probably if coming into the tournament, she would might not have been the name that everybody would have thought would top the the batting rankings because there's a lot of big hitters around. Um, but you see that there's there is a, a space for somebody um, like her that's very versatile and can hit all around the ground. Um, you don't always have to clear the the fence to still be effective. So, um, mm. I think she definitely is one of those girls that surprised me. But that being said, I never doubted her for a moment. 
Yeah, and you mentioned Jamima. Um, she's also a Christian like you, and um, we're also Christian. So we'd oh, love to we'd love to speak a bit about um, kind of your faith in cricket and how they, I guess, how they they run at the same time, and um, if ever it's affected you affected you negatively or anything like that. I'm not. I've been pretty fortunate that I think I think in South Africa where we come from, it's it's a lot easier that we can just be open about our Christianity. So it's really helped. I know it's maybe not the same for everybody around the globe. Um, but we've been very fortunate that we've had the support. Um, for me, I think um, I've got a little slogan that just said that uh, your talent is God's gift to you, and what you do with your talents, your gift back. And that's kind of um, I see cricket as an opportunity to just use my God-given um, talent to glorify His name, and it's almost like a, a method of how I can praise and worship. So every time I step out, I think you probably saw that I'll kneel down. And um, I just say a little prayer just to say, um, thank you, Lord, that you died for me. Now I get to play for you. So, um, yeah, that's really special. I've, I've, like I say, I think for me, um, you know, when things don't go your way, it's nice that you, you know, you've got somebody else rooting for you upstairs. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not always, um, there's probably more failures than success. But I think knowing that um, whenever we play, I just go out there to, to give glory to God. Um, that really makes it a lot easier. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, we we find it so encouraging to see top level sports people who are really uh, living out their faith very openly and you know and speaking about their faith uh, in I suppose in the things that they say and in their social media, but also just in their. Uh, attitude and I, I think you see that with with Jamima Rodriguez as well you know she she speaks very openly about it but there's a joy about the the person that she is isn't there which really communicates that's a person, uh, but that's actually exactly um our major Jamina was um I think a few years back at the Kia Super League she scored that 100 um and then she had a little bible verse at the end of it and, and obviously I've, I've 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 played against India for quite some time but you kind of have this expectation that more of them follow other religions so when I saw that, it was kind of an opportunity for me. So I sent the message to say, listen, well, I just saw you you posted the scripture. And then it got us um, talking. So she actually shared a whole testimony with me. Um, she's got a really nice, she, um, she, her dad's actually a pastor. So that's a really cool story. So I'm sure if you guys get in contact with her, she would probably also love to be on your show. But she's fantastic. <laughs> we actually told her, she, she, took, she calls me a, a big sister and I call her my little sister. So we've been in contact um over whatsapp quite a few times and she actually gave me a bath on the last trip to india which is really special so um but yeah i think that's the one thing it's, it's easy to um to talk the talk but to actually walk the walk and and um, your actions kind of shows more um and, and with her you can just see she just joy follows <laughs> flows yeah. out of her and, and and that's also it's like um I've, there's another saying that um enthusiastic uh, be the most enthusiastic person you know and enthusiasm is contagious and that's kind of you see that with her she's just um I think everybody wants to be around her because she's such a lovely person so I think that's one of the things for me as well I thought I'm like some unfortunately with cricket you never know whether it's going to be your day but that's one thing with a, a that I would want people to, when they look back at me, to not just think about me as, as a cricketer, but also me known as a person, and that I actually made a difference and, and impacted lives and um, and tried to be kind to those around us. Hmm. I think the thing I would find hard, I, I think about, because in my working life, I'm a teacher. So I'm just trying to imagine what it would be like if I if every moment of my working life was filmed and broadcast around the world in the way that yours is. And I just think, oh, what would people think of me in that situation? Probably not. <laughs> probably not that I was Christian. <laughs> so it's it, I think that's quite a challenge, isn't it, for for people of faith uh, in in the sporting arena? It's just the uh, the amount of exposure that that you have. Yeah, well, it's also, a, you can see that side, or it's, it's on the other side, it's a platform for us to actually speak about our faith. So that's what I try and see. But obviously, like you say, um, you can also be under criticism a lot more because eyes are on you all the time. So if you put a foot a foot wrong or um, say something you shouldn't or don't act as a best for everybody, you might get in trouble. But I, um, for, I don't know if it's fortunately or unfortunately, not all it's only recently that women's cricket has gotten a lot more professional where there's more eyes on us. And mm -hmm. we saw that now with hundred, but you know, I started at a time um, with my international career started in 2007 and we only had one tour a year. So we played three ODIs and it was, nobody even knew we were playing. So <laughs> I think it's come a long way. So it's definitely, it's, it's not at the same level as the men yet, but I think our future stars are going to have all those eyes on them. Um, but yeah, I think um, at, at the end of the day, 
I think like we know if, if it's part of you the fruit of the spirit will just flow out of you so um but we're still human we still make mistakes and, and every now and then we mess up so uh and do you do you have quite good support systems around you when you're on tour? Because I think I, I would I would imagine like for me that would be a really challenging thing to be away from family and away from church and 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 just you know be slightly isolated. Do you have sort of good people you can talk to when you're on tour and so on? Yeah, I've got a really strong support structure with my husband and um, parents, and um, we're really close. That's family, sister, brother. Um, but but it is definitely I think during especially during now with the times in Corona when um, we kind of live in bubbles and you're not really allowed to have family support with you on tour that's a bit challenging and we are at the moment a lot of our tours are extended because we have to go through quarantine periods so that's been a little bit challenging but um I think the other th the the good thing about it is we also realized during this time that you um you can have online church and you don't have to be in in, in the venue so yeah. quite nice. Um, you can still continue that wherever you are in the world. Um, so that, that there's plus and negatives to all of it. But um, but I've got at least a few really close friends that like um that 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 share the same values as I do. That makes it a little bit easier and just people that you can bounce some ideas off. But it, it it I would I would love I say it's always easy. Um, but we try and make the most of it because at the end of the day, it is an opportunity to use my talent. So it might not always be smooth sailing, but we try and make the most of it as as we can. Um, so what's South African domestic cricket like for women? Um, at the moment, um, we've got, we don't have a professional domestic structure just yet. They are looking into creating a, that opportunities and giving some contracts to domestic players. Um, but at the moment, unfortunately, we only have the 15 contracted national players. Um, and then there is a SA emerging side and then provincial um, uh, play uh, or teams. Um, like hopefully we're holding thumbs that in the next um, year or so that there's going to be contracts for the emerging slash academy players as well as some of the domestic players. Um, so unfortunately, most of those girls still just play for the love of the sport and hope they can make it to, to play for South Africa one day. Um, in terms of the, the national players, I think um, we've come a really long way since when I started playing and being almost amateur to now being professional and I think it's it's becoming a real viable career option for girls um unfortunately it's just at the top but um that's already good from where where we came from to where we are that's amazing strides and they just also CSA is investing in the women's game and I think especially after our performance in the 2017 World Cup in England yeah where I am at the moment mm -hmm. um we made it to the semi-finals and it was televised and we did quite well there. I think that got a lot of interest to going back home. And ever since then, we've we've had a lot more support. Um, so we've been, so all, all in all, I think um, we're heading in the right direction at the moment. Yeah, and it seems to me, as given the history of South Africa, particularly over the last 30 years, that the sports teams really are very important for national identity. So I think about the rugby boys, you know, winning the world, you know, beating England <laughs> in the World Cup final, I, and 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 I think there's a huge amount of pride, you know, perhaps more so than in England, uh, with your your sports teams really kind of representing you as a nation. I think it depends what sport, because football football fans is in a league of their own, but um, <laughs> definitely when it comes to rugby, I think um, like our, our uh, late president Nelson Mandela said that sport has the power to unite people, and I think um, that's something we really hold on to. Um, in South Africa, we've got lots of other troubles <laughs> and stuff around, but um, one thing is that people love their sport, whether it's rugby or cricket, or or so they love supporting them. But um, they also, if you don't do well, you also know about it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You win, but they when you lose. <laughs> um, I understand there's been like obviously um to an extent COVID bubbles and stuff with the hundred, but how much have you actually been able to go out and see England? Yeah, unfortunately, this time around we didn't really get to explore much. Um, we had some really strict uh safe living guidelines where we basically it was between the hotel training facilities. Um. If, if at all, maybe to, um, I, I, I spoke to, uh, about it on uh, Kate and uh, Alex's podcast about walking around in Cusco. That was about <laughs> my highlight. Um, so, um, but fortunately, I've been to the UK a few times. So I've managed to do all the touristy things before. Um, 
but we had to try and be safe to make sure that the competition can continue. So um, I'm sure in the next year, hopefully we'll be back and we can enjoy that what Manchester has to offer because um, um, I only heard about the things because we haven't really managed to see it just yet. Um, so I look forward to coming back and exploring a bit more next year. It would be great if you could play for Originals next year as well. That'd be good. And then will you be playing in the Commonwealth Games? In yes. Yeah. Um, so the team, obviously, I would have to make the team first, but mm -hmm. South Africa will be playing in that tournament. Um, so that would be, um, I've never played in any in a Commonwealth or something before. So that would be one of the highlights of my career. So hopefully um, I'll, I'll keep on pushing mm -hmm and uh, make sure that I can make that team and, and be in the Commonwealth Games next year. Mm -hmm. And it's in Birmingham, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah, we're really excited. Mm -hmm. So uh, because we live in Birmingham, you get to apply special early for tickets. So we've applied for the semi both semifinals mm -hmm. and the final of the, of, the, uh, of the cricket. So hopefully... Oh, that's we'll awesome. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll be there for all those games. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a fantastic thing for the mm -hmm. city. Really looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hopefully by then, uh, there were... COVID would have to relax a little bit and no bubble life and then we can actually meet in person. I would love to, to actually come and say hi or see you at one of the games. Yeah. Yeah. You South Africa for support. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is a question we've asked all our guests and I don't, have you ever tried the McCoy's crisps? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we've been asking, you know. <laughs> I've seen some of the other teams that got sponsored by one of the KP because got some for free. Yeah. But we actually didn't get any. And to be I haven't seen it in the shop either. So um, I definitely think before I leave, I need to find that bag of McCoy somewhere. Yeah. They're very, <laughs> very unhealthy, but they're really nice. <laughs> yeah. The, the, of choice. Yeah, the best flavour is salt and vinegar. Salt and vinegar, they're yeah. They're the best to go for. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You'll have to try it. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time out. No, it's a huge pleasure. Thank you for doing what you guys are doing and, and giving us an opportunity to, to share our stories. So you must have a lovely day and good luck for the rest of your season. Um, do you have any upcoming games now or is it, is the league over or how? We how finish. Pick? Yeah, I think we finish in September. So we've probably got a few games to go. So, yeah. Oh, awesome. All the best for that and we'll definitely stay in touch and mm -hmm. please share it once this has gone viral. <laughs> <laughs> and we're excited because we're, we're going on Friday, we're going to, down to London uh, for the day because we've got tickets for the Eliminator. So we're hope, we were hoping Manchester Originals will be, it would have been there, but it looks like we'll be watching Birmingham. So we might yeah, I'm, actually I'm, have to be cheering for Birmingham. One, one other game gone away. I mean, it was close margins. Yeah. Um, I think we um, we at back end we at least we, we we got our combinations right, but um, unfortunately now well, now we've got something to come back next year. We've got some unfinished business, so hopefully yeah, we can do next year. But we might because we actually still in Manchester, and then we leave tomorrow to go to London because we meet up with the SA team on the twenty fourth. Um, so we still have some a few days in 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 the UK before we head out. Oh, and are you, is, are you going to the West Indies next? Is that is that no. your schedule? Yes. That's a tough life you have, isn't it? <laughs> no, I think the only thing I think it's going to also be in a bubble, so it's not the West Indies like we usually uh... get to. Through <laughs> the ocean and the resorts, and might also just be training and to the field and back. But at least we get to play because there was a time when I mean sport had to stand still. So for us yeah. to at least get an opportunity to play um, mm -hmm. is, is special, and we've got quite a big year ahead leading up until the World Cup um, in yeah. New Zealand. Yes, mm -hmm. of course. Well, all the best for that. And uh, thank you for your time. And you um, have a yeah, we, we look forward to seeing your achievements in the future. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank thank you. Thank you. See you. Thank you. You're listening to the Naughty Child podcast with me, Richard. And me, Polly. I'm the dad. And I'm the daughter. We're talking about the 100 cricket, and so we've reviewed the eliminator, we reviewed the final, we've heard from Thea Brooks, we've heard from Mignon Dupree. What's left to talk about, Polly? Well, sadly, there's not really anything, except I think we just need to sum up the tournament a bit, mm. um, because it feels like 
well, I, I don't think it even feels like it has been monumental. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I was just thinking about it earlier. And, you know, on the TV and stuff, they said, oh, it's so great to see so many young children and young children this. And it has been. And I think I read yesterday that there's been a record amount of children sign up and go to like Dynamos and All Star Cricket, which is incredible. But actually, one thing for me is, I guess people my age having an interest. So one of my friends, never watched cricket, doesn't really have an interest, has been watching the 100 matches and is coming to her first cricket game with me later in the season. And for me, that's really exciting because, you know, young children, yes, it's really important that they get into the game, but it's also about having an audience. And, you know, although you'll naturally get spectators from people that play, actually, you know, having a completely different audience is really exciting and especially in the women's game um and yeah I, th- I think it's just a very very exciting time oh it, it definitely is it's been a fantastic tournament and uh, you know the contact we've been able to have with players as well yeah. you know I think that that is a huge thing I think mm-hmm. the fact that so many players make themselves available 100% um you know to contact with us but also yeah. after games going yeah. around the boundary just uh, chatting yeah. with fans yeah. In a way that sports people just tend not to yeah. do. Yeah. Um, so I think I've really appreciated that. Oh, 100%. And it's so nice to, you know, see someone play and, you know, maybe if they take four wickets or get a half century, but then actually to speak to them and they have a human side and you realise they're not robots on a field, you know? Is it true you bumped into Crossy again? I bumped into Crossy again. I was wearing my Crossy 16 shirt, <laughs> which I think helped. But yeah, I, you know... You've just been to the toilet at the Oval. <laughs> I think she's stalking me. <laughs> um, but no, that that was pretty cool. Um, but uh, yeah, I just think it was such a... I mean, maybe not so much the men's game, but I think the women's games, they've just been just such a nice environment mm. and um, it's promoted cricket in a really positive way. And it's been amazing games. Um, but also the 100 Rising... The, you know, a, a hundred, um, you know, young adults were given the opportunity to work with broadcasters, you know, TV crews, stuff like that. I want to do that in two years. Yeah. Um, and that's such a valuable opportunity. And to be able to give those people um, that chance with something completely brand new is, it's quite a big gamble, but, you know, it's worked really well. And... Yeah, it's just been really exciting and hope, hopefully that'll be me in two years. <laughs> that would be brilliant. That would be absolutely amazing. Now, Polly, I've got a question for you. Yeah. What is your team of the tournament? My team. My team. Mm. Or your top top 10 players, my, shall my we top, say. Yeah, I was going to do a starting 11, but um, the BBC did that already. You know? <laughs> I have to be original, so we're going to do top 10. Um, so I've gone for obviously a mix of batters, mm-hmm. bowlers, all-rounders. Mm-hmm. So, number one has to be Danny Van Nierkirk. Mm-hmm. In total, she's had um, 259 runs. Mm-hmm. Um, highest was 67 not out. But she's also taken eight wickets, economy of 5.5. Um, so, obviously, she's mm-hmm. the best. Then, Jamie Rod- Rodriguez, um, 249 runs, 92 not out. Um, she also got the most 50s and uh, a very high strike rate. Then we have to mention Eve Jones. Come on, Jonesy for just, England. She's been incredible. Mm. She needs to get an England contract. 233 runs, um, high score of 64. And then probably, I think this is my favourite player of the tournament, Alice Capsey. This was kind of the reason I was so glad Oval won. Because, mm. just, just because of Alice Capsey. You know, she's like four months older than me. And she got 150 runs. With a highest of 59, which was at Lord's. <laughs> um, and she's also taken 10 wickets and had an economy of 4.52. So, you know, she's definitely up there for me. Um, then actually, this was influenced by speaking to Emily Windsor a bit. Um, and I put Nat Siver. Mm-hmm. Um, because she was also captain of Trent Rockets. Mm-hmm. Um, and she, t- she scored uh, 120 runs. And she took three wickets. So, you know, not amazing on the bowling, but, you know, as a batter, I guess as a part of your squad, very valuable. 
Then for my keeper, Amy Jones, mm -hmm. um, 176 runs, 42 not out is her highest. Um, and I think she'd just be a good person to have in the squad. Yeah. Um, then kind of onto the bowlers, Tash Varon. She has been incredible. I mean, the last 48 hours have been amazing for her. Mm. She's taken 18 wickets with economy of uh, 5.17. Um, personal personal preference, Kate Cross. Uh, taken 12 wickets with economy of 6.21. And then again, a great captain, good leadership. Uh, Amanda Jade Wellington has been amazing as well 14 wickets economy of 4.6 and then finally Kirsty gordon 15 wickets economy of 6.24 and great fielder as well yeah really good i i, I totally agree with that mm -hmm. i would maybe add alex hartley to that as well yeah because she's not only played brilliantly she's just been great she's in the commentary been box. so good it, yeah and i think certainly the players so her and kate cross heather and knight. heather knight who've been both playing mm -hmm. and doing the media work as yeah. well. That is such... It must be exhausting. <laughs> exhausting. I mean, because yeah. they're going all around the country. Exactly. Um, it, I think it's extraordinary mm -hmm. what, they, what they did. And actually, they're doing it for the benefit of the yeah. wider game, aren't they? Definitely. Um, so I, I real respect uh, to those three in particular mm -hmm. for their work in the commentary yeah. box. And they're, is... they're really good at it as well. Yeah. Um, and I think they, they add the player insight, which mm. is you know so important, especially to a new format where the commentators haven't played this game themselves. Mm. So, yeah, 100%. You have been listening to the Naughty Child podcast with me, Richard. And me, Polly. I'm the dad. And I'm the daughter. And that is the end of our series on The 100. It is. We need to take a break. We need to take a break. It has been an intense month. <laughs> it's been a lot of work. Um, it's been really fun, though. So we'll be back early September. Mm -hmm. Don't know what we're going to talk about. <laughs> well, if you've got any suggestions for us. If you've got us, suggestions, then, yeah. Then, uh, yeah, let us know. Uh, how can people get in contact with us? Uh, we have an Instagram at Naughty Child Podcast. We have a Twitter at OO Child Podcast. We also have a YouTube channel where all of them are posted. So that's also Naughty Child Podcast. And you can follow us on Spotify, Apple, wherever. Um, and in the meantime, we'll be relaxing, probably watching some of the Rachel Hayhoe Flint and Charlotte Edwards Cup. And we'll be back soon. <laughs>